Hello, and welcome back to the fourth episode of the Delay of Game podcast. Today, we'll be covering the Maple Leafs and the Pittsburgh Penguins trade of Kasperi Kapanen and the first round pick, as well as future options for both Pittsburgh and Toronto, and also covering just the daily happenings around the NHL and the current playoff rounds. So to kick things off, um, the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Toronto Maple Leafs had a okay-ish kind of deal. Not super big, but the main pieces are obviously Kasperi Kapanen and the first round pick for this year. Um, So obviously Kasperi Kapanen going to Pittsburgh as well as Jesper Lindgren and Pontus Aberg. And Pittsburgh is sending back to Toronto a first-round pick for this year's draft, Evan Rodriguez, Philip Hollander, and David Worsofsky. What is your opinion? I mean, it's a pretty like, decent trade for, I guess, both sides. A lot of people say it's a steal for Toronto, but I think they're kind of underrating the impact that Kapanen could potentially have with Crosby or Malkin. Um, he's a fast uh, winger who can definitely thrive with playing with talented players like Crosby Malkin. Um, and he's still pretty young. He's like 24, so he still has potential to get even better. But yeah, Toronto definitely got a really good return for him with the 15th overall pick and a good prospect in Philip Hollander. Okay. I could see I could see that, but I still think paying a first round pick for Kasperi Kapanen seems like a little steep. Because I don't know if Kasperi Kapanen is gonna be a top six forward. He had his opportunities in Toronto to play with uh Tavares, right? And to play with uh play with Matthews. But I don't think that, that worked out. I don't see how if he goes to Pittsburgh and plays with Crosby or Malkin, how much better that'll actually make him. Like I don't mind Pittsburgh going after Kapanen. I think he could be a decent player in their system. I just think the price was definitely too much for them to pay. Giving up two really good young assets. I think even just a first-round pick by itself was too much at 15th overall. And throwing in, like, everything else was just even more substantial. Yeah. But what do you you think about Pittsburgh um, this year losing out to the Montreal Canadiens in the play-in rounds? And then instead of starting, like like, a rebuilding phase or kind of focusing on their prospects uh, for the future. Instead, they trade away their prospects and their draft picks for a guy like Kasperi Kapanen to kind of boost them like right now. Well, I think the way that Pittsburgh sees it is they have Crosby and Malkin playing high-level hockey for probably maybe three more years or four, Um, and they want to capitalize on having them uh, play at this level and they feel that if they like just focusing on rebuilding right now is probably uh, not the plan they want to go because then they're going to be wasting the rest of Crosby and Malkin's high level of play yeah but do you really think that that Pittsburgh still has a chance probably not because I'm like you look this year they got it they went out and got a Jason Zucker, right? At the trade trade deadline or close to the trade deadline, they traded uh they, they traded they got him from Minnesota. And he he was supposed to be that guy to play alongside uh in the top 6, but that didn't really work out cuz they still lost to the Montreal Canadiens. Um and I don't see them honestly getting that much better in the next year or two to have like another run at the Stanley Cup. But can they really fully rebuild with 
Crosby and Malkin on the team? That's fair. I mean, as long as you have Crosby and Malkin, you're always going to be good in some way. But, I mean, even even if they are, like, you have to look at their their prospect pool. They have very few people, like, coming up to the NHL. And you got a lot of, a lot of guys taking up a lot, a lot of money. Yeah, so I don't know if they really can rebuild with all of the kind of the big contracts they have. Like, what would they trade in a rebuild to get, like, prospects? They have some interesting, interesting options. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna trade a goalie this year, right? You think Matt Murray goes? Probably Matt Murray. What do you think the return will be? People forget that this guy won two Stanley Cups with Pittsburgh. Um, obviously, he had a great team in front of him, but winning two Stanley Cups in your first two seasons is still like, pretty huge. I don't know if they can get like a first-round pick. They're probably going to be trying to get some picks and prospects back after giving up so much in the last few trades. But I think maybe like a second round pick and a decent prospect would be a decent return for them. Really? You don't think they go, you don't think they uh, trade uh, Matt Murray for like another defenseman? But like what team? Okay, what, what are the teams that would probably be interested in Murray? Like you have maybe Calgary could use a goalie. Yes, Calgary could use a goalie. Maybe Chicago if Crawford's getting older. Yeah. Um, I mean, who else is there? There's not a lot of teams looking for goaltending right now. And I don't think they're going to want to trade Murray to a team in their division. I could see Minnesota going after Matt Murray. But I guess they could give up. I think Dumba would be too much for them, though. That's too much. It's got to be like Matt Murray and something else. Or like... Uh, Matt Murray and a lot of other things if you want Matt Dumba. But I feel like Pittsburgh is kind of forced to trade a goalie with the expansion draft coming up next year and teams will take advantage of that. Yeah, but you could also make a deal with like the Seattle Kraken and just say, hey, I'll give you this if you choose, don't choose this guy or something. I mean, there's no guarantee that Seattle will make that deal, first of all. And I think teams will learn after the whole Vegas situation to be more careful with Seattle because Vegas kind of robbed every team. <laughs> Vegas Vegas got paid, or not paid, but like they, they were given assets to take like good players. Yeah, like uh, they got Shea Theodore from Anaheim. Like he's a stud. Yeah, they, all, they, they, got, they took Riley Smith and Marsha So. Like, they wanted both of them to go. So they could protect, like, Mike Matheson. <laughs> That's crazy to me. Vegas kind of destroyed a lot of teams. Yeah, Vegas robbed people, man. That's crazy. But yeah, like I was saying before, I just think the Matt Murray... Like, he's been kind of struggling the last few years, so I don't think the return will be... Maybe as huge as people expect. Yeah, I don't think it'll be as high as people. I mean, it's hard to tell, though. Uh, okay, why don't we move on to, like, Toronto? So through this pick, they get, obviously, the first round. The first round draft pick for this year. And also a couple, uh, or not a couple, just one prospect. And uh, kind of an AHL guy, and also third, fourth liner in Evan Rodriguez. So, uh, for me, I think Toronto wins this trade. They get that first round pick and they get to use it in a pretty deep draft this year. 15, there's, you've seen a, a lot of great people get picked at 15. And I think by moving Kasperi Kapanen, they also relieve some of that cap pressure that they have on their team. And instead, they have a, instead of 
how much is Cabinet making? Like three million something? Yeah, so instead of having a guy make three million, you get Rodriguez who's making I don't know, like not not three million. But uh you still get like a like a bottom six forward who can help out in the in the depth. No, I, th I think the big thing for uh, Toronto is just like the cap freedom they get. They probably want to shake up the team a little bit after the disappointing year. So getting rid of that $3 million contract also gives them some freedom to uh, strengthen another position, like defense. And what do you think about uh, the prospect Hollander? I mean, he was a second-round pick in the 2018 draft. I mean, he might not be anything more than like a third or second liner, but... To be honest, that's pretty much what Kapanen is. So you're getting that kind of a prospect as well as the 15th overall pick. So that's like that's a pretty big haul. What do you think? Uh, what do you think about Toronto's uh, defense? How do you think they'll they can improve that? Do you think Tyson Berry gets moved? I mean, I think Tyson Berry definitely doesn't resign. He, I don't think he was he wasn't the best fit. I think Toronto needs more of a stable defensive kind of defenseman. What do you think about Cody CC? Yeah, I think Cody Cece is probably done. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> He's definitely not the best defenseman out there, but no, he is. He is not. I heard rumors about like Chris Tanev. I mean, Tanev would be a good defenseman for Toronto to get. Yeah, like it's you. You have like Morgan Riley, and then Chris Tanev. Assuming that they don't resign Tanev. But I mean, Vancouver has cap problems too. They're they have very expensive bottom six forwards. I think Tanev is like probably one of the top priorities, though, besides Markstrom. I mean, the way he's been playing with Hughes is pretty impressive. Yeah, I agree. What other what other defensemen are available? Oh, Alex Petrangelo. Yeah, I think he's going to have to take a little bit of a cut. Uh, yeah, I think so, too. He's going to be way too expensive. I don't even know what team could afford him. Pretty much only like rebuilding teams like New Jersey. I mean, St. Louis could re-sign him. Do they even have the cap space to do so? I mean, would you move pieces to re-sign a guy like Alex Petrangelo, who's your captain? Yeah, maybe like Jake Allen or like Alex Steen. I feel like Jake Allen did okay, though. He, he was better than Jordan Bennington. I mean, they also signed Justin Falk to like a long extension worth like six and a half million per season that's gonna hurt big time but going back to the trade i think toronto could get a pretty good prospect at 15 like there's guys like Braden schneider on defense or a guy like uh dawson mercer or noel gunler who could be good players for them or maybe even a guy like yoroslav askarov if he's still available yeah do you know that Eric Carlson was drafted 15th? It's pretty, what a steal that was. So you, you could get a guy like Eric Carlson. You never know. That's a draft. You actually never know. You could get a Eric Carlson or you could get like a Zach Bogosian. Hey, Bogo Norris. Bogo Norris. He had a good play yesterday for Tampa. He did. That was, that was a slick play. He went, he cut through the defense and fed a... Who is it? Is it Coleman or something? Coleman? Yeah, hey, I think it was Coleman. That was, that was pretty smooth. He's finally showing his potential. Well, on the topic of uh, the playoffs, uh, what are you thinking so far? Why don't we talk about um, Dallas and the Colorado Avalanche first? I'm very surprised by how that's going. Yeah, so far, it's 2 nothing Dallas. The game three is tonight uh, at the time of this recording. So far, I definitely think many people expected Colorado to win the series or, if not, even run away with it. But I think Dallas has really shown that they can, uh, I guess, neutralize the offensive power that Colorado has and the talent. Um, and I think a lot of, I guess, uh, lower end players on Dallas maybe have stepped up, like... Uh, Dennis Gurianov for Dallas. He's been really good. And Miro Heiskanen has been absolutely insane for them. Hi yeah, Heiskanen is very underrated, I think. Yeah, he's talk everyone's talking about like Makar and Hughes. 
but like Mira Heiskin and low key is is very good. Yeah, he has fourteen points as a defenseman. He's kind of carrying Dallas almost. Who do you think ends up ends up winning this series? You think the Avs come back from two nothing? I think Avs will definitely win some games and make it interesting. But I mean, right now it looks like Dallas has figured out Colorado. And they definitely have more veteran experience, and I think it's definitely shown. And you have to remember that uh, Ben Bishop also is injured, and Hudobin's been definitely stepping up in his absence. Yeah, I think the the injuries for Colorado in the first game really, really, uh, really hurt him. Like uh, Philip Grubauer getting injured—that's that's rough. I mean, Francois is not a bad goalie, but losing your starter. In the first game of the series, that's pretty brutal. And then they also have a uh, also Eric Johnson went down with an injury, and losing one of your one of your defensemen, that's not good. I guess we will just have to see how the Avalanche can bounce back. For sure, and it's been kind of fun to watch like the whole Miro Heiskanen versus Kale McCarr series going on. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on to the other game in in the West. Uh, the other series, Canucks against the Golden Knights. Um, the Golden Knights crushed the Canucks in the first game. There was uh, some funny, funny stuff happening between uh, uh, Reeves and Roussel. I thought I, I thought that was pretty funny. And then yesterday, the Canucks came back and tied the series. So, I mean, good on them. Um, what are you thinking? Who wins? I still think Vegas will get the win. I think they just have too much talent and veteran talent that will overtake the younger Canucks. But I think it's going to be a closer series than people initially expected. Yeah, well, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say the Canucks win the Stanley Cup. Oh, no, is this a jinx? Nope. It's it's the belief. If if any year, if there's going to be a year that the Canucks win, it's going to be 2020, dude. As long as they stay healthy and there's not any big injury to, like, Markstrom or Pedersen. That's true. Markstrom is absolutely carrying the team. I, I mean, I'm not saying the, like, the whole team is, is playing bad or anything, but Markstrom is just, just like, he just has this ability to make key saves in key moments. And I don't know, man. Like he, he's so good. I know in the last like two years, he's like reached an insane level. It went from people thinking he was he was gonna be a backup at best, to to people now talking about how this man did not get nominated for the Vesna. <laughs> what a turn of events. What about what do you think about Bo Horvat being the leader in goals? That's pretty unexpected. Captain Bo, he's. I mean, he's definitely stepped up as the captain. And he, I think he's unleashed a whole new gear that we haven't really seen before. And he's shown, like, tons of skill as well, some of his goals. Yeah, he's, he's like, I hope a lot of players on the Canucks have, I think, elevated their game to reach that new, new kind of compete level. And also getting Tyler to fully back last game was huge as well. Yeah, last night, instant impact. He stepped on the ice and just scored a goal. <laughs> did you did you hear about the comments after on like Instagram of Jonathan Marshall? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did see that. I thought he was hacked, but it was actually him. I don't I didn't know if it was real or not. Honestly, I don't know what to think. It's pretty funny. Yeah, he apologized after, so it was real. <laughs> but I mean, like, why bother with social media when you're in the middle of a playoff series? And, like, you're, like, an NHL player. You don't respond to these, like, comments. Yeah, I don't... I don't know, man. I I mean, I can understand it if he's frustrated with with the loss and stuff. But he's just responded to comments of people calling him, a, a, like, a diver, right? And I'm sure, like... I'm sure people people have said worse. And, like players have done worse and been called out for other things and they don't respond to random Instagram comments. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, whatever. It's, I mean, it's nothing crazy. He's just responding to Instagram comments. It's pretty funny, though. And also, in the East, the two series are Tampa and Boston and Islanders and Flyers. 
What do you think about those? I mean, the Lightning tied it up yesterday in uh, in overtime, so that was that was nice to see. Nice to see them fight back after losing game one. Man, the Bruins played well in the first game, but the second game yesterday, the light the Lightning kind of ran them over. Yeah, it's definitely a close series between probably two of the best teams in the league, maybe. Two veteran teams with lots of talent to win the Cup. I think the Lightning come out on top. One, because they have Steven Stamkos back. I don't know, man. I, I just think the Lightning have more more scoring from their from their depth and throughout the lineup. Yeah, they have so much depth and talent all over the roster. It's insane. How about the Flyers versus Islanders? I don't know, man. Barry Trotz is a good coach. I think uh, right now, the current game that's going on, uh, it's currently 3-1 Flyers in the third, so potentially Flyers tie it. It's going to be a good series. Man, I don't know how to predict the outcome. I'll say Lightning in six and Flyers in... I'll go Flyers in six also. I'm going to say Flyers in seven and I'm going to say Bruins in six. I think Bruins are going to come on top. Hmm, interesting. We'll see who's right. Mm -hmm. Do you you hear the news today about uh, Tarasenko having to get another shoulder surgery, man? That's brutal. He's definitely probably not going to come out as the same dominant player as he has in the past. I feel bad for the guy, man. He already missed so so much of the season with that first shoulder surgery. Now he's got to get another one. Like, damn it. Yeah, St. Louis, they, they definitely have a lot of question marks with like their goaltending after the playoffs. Uh, Tarasenko, cap troubles will be difficult for them. What do you think about uh, uh, the Arizona Coyotes? The penalty that they that they got for uh, um, what is it? Like cheating at the the combine or whatever? What did they even do? Yeah, they like did extra testing for some players, I think. Oh, they had they forfeit a first and a second. The first is for next year, but that's rough, man. And they already don't have their first this year from the Taylor Hall trade, so. Yeah, they and 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 Cheka is also out. Yeah, it's looking a little rough for Arizona right now. A lot of question marks. You think you think Oliver Ekman Larson gets traded? I mean, he's been struggling the last few years. I don't know how many people are gonna be lining up for him after his struggles and his big contract he has. What do you think about Taylor Hall? You think he stays? No, I think he wants to go. He's gonna take a discount and go to a, a legit contender. Yeah, I could see that. Probably Colorado. That's my guess. Um, I guess the last thing we'll touch on is uh, Mike Green retiring. He's 34, and I think he has uh, like 500 points. Yeah, 501 points in 880 games. What do you remember about him? I remember him being like a great defenseman in the Washington Capitals. Yeah, he was a one of their better defensemen for quite a while. He he was a good offensive defenseman for them. He had he had like two seventy plus point seasons with Washington, so that's really really good for a defenseman. Holy, seventy six points in seventy five games. He scored thirty one goals. He scored thirty one goals as a defenseman. I feel like ever since he joined Detroit, he kind of became underrated. Also because he was on pretty bad team. He was on one of the worst teams in the league. Well, I mean, this year they were the worst team in the league. And then he gets traded to Edmonton at the deadline, and he plays two games. <laughs> he plays two games and just retires. <laughs> and it's, he's, like, he's not even that old. He's 34 years old, so kind of shocking, to be honest. I mean, he, he, didn't, um, he didn't join them in the bubble. Yeah, but like, I didn't think he was going to fully retire. Well, I mean, he's had a good career. Yeah, it feels like he's been around for quite a while. Yeah. I'm honestly surprised he's only 34. Yeah, he's had a solid career. Good on him, man.
happy retirement. Uh, all right, we'll wrap it up here. Thank you guys for listening to the fourth episode of the Delay of Game podcast, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.